Yeah. I don't know if you're the first time watcher. I'm just some old guy. I mean, I'm old. Yeah, I'm 67. I'm going to be 68. But I've been working on this Trans Am that I decided to do. I'm retired. Never rebuilt a car before in my life. Never owned a Trans Am in my life. Never did much welding. But anyway, over the last five or six years, I've rebuilt this car, and that's just, if you watch my videos, that's what this is about. I, I cover almost, I think I cover 99% of how to rebuild your Trans Am, a 76. So, again, the videos aren't that much, that they're not that great of order. I'm starting to put say this in all the videos. Because I might start, let's say I... I don't know, I start something, but then you don't have the parts, or you got to sandblast it, or you got to do work. So then you go work on something else, and then you work on something else. It's hard to make these videos in order. And then there's the other thing, like you, you're working on something, but then you got to go do something else for a week or two. I mean, I don't know what, it, what things I got to do. Work on another car, work on my yard, work on refrigerator, whatever. So that's what's going on with these videos. And this video is really about the problems I, I'm I thought it was done, but these are the problems that came up, and I just made it, I'm making a video about it. And I'm waiting for the car. When I get it back, I'll explain in depth. If you watch the rest of the video, you know what I'm talking about. I'll explain in depth what was wrong and how it was fixed. Yeah, just another update on my uh, Trans Am. So, I got a list here I want to talk about. So I, uh, I just don't feel like working on the car. I'm kind of burned out. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, I took it into a shop because uh, well, for the main reason I don't want to crawl into the dash. It just kills my back. But the temperature gauge, they checked it. They said the uh, sending units all right. It's the gauge. So I ordered another one. The fan, the heater fan. You know when you turn on your defroster or whatever that wasn't working they got it working i want to get into more detail explanation later to maybe help somebody that has these problems once they uh, once i get pick the car up the wipers they got that working it was some kind of uh, something under the dash again i can't remember the real problem that ran it, i ran into which is my fault the rim on the when i I didn't want to drive it down to the, uh, the, the real reason I took it in because I had an alignment problem. When I was steering, when I was driving, just turn it that much, the car wanted to dive to left or right. So I didn't want to drive it. it. It wasn't safe. So I took it in for that, and then I found, when I got there, they showed me that the back rim was loose. So I ruined my back rim. I mean, the lug button nuts were loose. I don't know how it happened, but I did. So, so that caused a whole other set of problems. So the, it hollowed out the lug nut holes. It just ruined them. And the space and the space around that side, it ruined that, the lug nuts. In other words, it's quicker for them just to get a new spacer. So then I had to find rims. And I also been thinking about it. I don't have a spare so I went looking for the honeycomb rims and uh, oh let me get back to the springs first I mean the alignment so they said this is what they said you know they put it on a machine they showed me the uh, the printout and again I can't remember how I don't know if it's age or I wasn't paying attention or what but they said the springs were too tall, and I know the car is, is sitting higher than the stock. I changed the front springs when I rebuilt the car. You know, I ordered springs, but apparently, and I had a hell of a time getting them in. I got a video on that way back when. But they said the springs are too tall, and it's causing the wheels to tilt out, you know, away from the car at the bottom. So I said, get new springs. And again, none of these parts you can get just go down to your auto parts store and get. So getting back to the wheel, so they're going to change the springs. I can't, I mean, I've done all this work. I need to be able to drive this car for, 
you know, I don't know, car shows maybe, whatever. But getting back to the rim, so I went looking for new honeycomb rims. So I looked on, you know, there's some on eBay, and I'm going to talk more in depth about what to look for when you're looking for rims. So there's some on eBay, but then you got to pay shipping, and they want a crazy amount of money. Yeah. But I wanted them now, you know. So I looked on Marketplace and Craigslist, and I found somebody that I called, and they said call this person, and this person says call that person. So in this inside this video, if you watch it, I go down to this guy's house, which is on the I'm in uh, near Olympia, the state capital, and I drove down to the border near Vancouver, near the Oregon border. It took an hour and a half or so, and the guy had like 20 rims in his shop upstairs and some other parts so i got two rims two, uh, two rims what i thought were the best i took them back to the uh auto shop where they're doing the work and th these are old guys like me and they they understand these old cars so uh so what to watch out for this uh, polyester or whatever they call it, poly something that the rubber coating is stamped onto the rim that you see that is painted gold. Uh, just look at that. See if there's any big pieces missing. You can fix it with the. Uh, I, I wish I could think of the term polyester, uh, polyester uh, like Bondo, because when you push that, it's, it's hard. <coughs> it feels like hard rubber. The other, th other issue in these rims is, and I think I tr I covered this in another video when I was when a, a guy came out to do my put my tires on. Man, I'm hot, but uh, uh, let's see. I was just thinking about something else. Uh, so the it, you know when they balance the rim, they put the tire on they put the tire on the machine, and this thing comes down a cone and it holds it. Well, those machines ruined most of these rims. If you look at the top of your rim, I mean, if you're looking for rims, the the top might be oval shaped. I mean, it might be out a half inch or quarter inch. So, so when I got my rim balanced, what you do is you there's a way around this. You just flip them over, flip the rims over upside down, and put the cone in from the backside. Not you know most tire shops didn't weren't didn't think of that or they didn't care or whatever. But there's a lot of rims that are just they're wasted. It doesn't really matter I don't think because you're gonna put a cover over it. But uh, it's something to watch out for. So when I look for the rims, I look for ones that are, these didn't have any cracks in them in the in the material the plastic material. And I picked the ones that were the least bit out, the least amount out of round in that center. So, so now I get new rims and now they're going to be painted. So I'm thinking, great, what do I do about that? You know, I can't, I got to get, I can't bring the car home. You can't drive it. So, uh, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, I, I bring the rim, they switch the tire, but now I got to paint it. What, what am I supposed to do? I mean, when I take my car down to the paint shop, the guy takes weeks i mean months sometimes so the guy said hey you want me to paint the room for you paint the rims because i got two one for spare so i said yeah paint them so you know i guess he knows a painter and anyway uh so in the meantime i took the rim and i called up the, the guy that had done my tires before and i said come on oh and they said at the tire shop they said we don't we don't balance tires or rims. So I'll get more into that later. I mean, there's a guy at the desk that doesn't do work, you know, like the, uh, the, the guy that sits at the desk, and then there's the mechanics, and then there's the owner. So when I brought the rims back down, no, the owner said, I want to talk to you. So he went, he, he called me in, and he said, you know, if you put new springs in, this isn't, it's, this isn't cheap. It's going to cost, I don't know, 200 plus two hours. I mean, it's like 450 bucks. That, that's worth it to me. I, I do not want to put springs in again. But at the same time, we started talking about the rim. And he, he's the guy that says, the owner says, hey, 
And he's my age. And he says, you want me to paint the room? And I said, yeah, paint it. So in the meantime, I had... The first, the man, I don't know if I said this. The manager said, we don't balance tires. We don't balance rims and we don't put on tires. This is the manager. And I can understand that. There's no money in it. But when I went down, the owner said, like I said, he goes, do you want me to paint, paint it? And if you do, we're going to have to sandblast the, uh, the rims and then we'll paint them. So before I went down there, I had called the tire guy and I said, go down there and balance the rims. You know, take the tire out, put the tires on the two tires, take that, you know, take that old rim off. I, I hope I'm talking clear. So anyway, he, he gets, he orders the tire, he goes down, he, and, and in the right in between, I decided that no, we don't, he, I don't want the tire guy to put the tire on yet, if that makes sense. So he, but I don't like to, uh, I don't like to, uh, screw people. You know, I mean, the guy, I already told the guy to get the tire, go down and do it. We made, a, we had a price and it was 300 bucks three, for him to drive all the way down there, get an extra tire, take the old rim off, put the old, you know, one tire on the new rim and a new tire. But then the paint, the guy at the auto shop says, no, we got to, we got to uh, sandblast the rim first. So, I, you know, I agree with that. If you look on your inside of your rims, if they're all, if they look kind of rusted, at all and I did this with my other rooms I sandblasted everything and then I just painted the inside with a uh, you know rust uh, rust restore you know it, it turns it it turns any rust future rust black so anyway that's where I am I'm waiting for the car oh and then I ordered the temperature gauge from uh, from uh, uh, classic industries and that was like 150 bucks but with ship well, with classic industries, they always charge shipping, and then I want to get it down here. I don't want, and the other thing is, I don't like to make people wait on me. I'd rather have me waiting on them. So I paid an extra 20 bucks to get this thing shipped, so now it's going to be here tomorrow. Today's the uh, uh, 221, uh, 24. And the reason I'm telling you all, you know, in the beginning when I started these videos, and I've never made videos before, I said, I'm going to tell you the truth. So this is... This is what this is what's happening. So hopefully when I get the car back, it'll be balanced. The fan will work. Oh, my list. The fan will work. The temp gauge will work. The wipers will work. The alignment will be fixed, and that it'll be done. And I always say that. And the other thing I'm thinking about is where you know these cars they didn't come with a full tire. They came with these mini tires. I don't want one of those little things. So I'm going to mount, somehow when I get this back, I'm going to weld a mount, uh, you know, one of those uh, things on the floor that come up. And uh, so anyway, that's where I am. It, you know, it's going to cost what it costs. I don't want to, I've been doing all this work for two reasons, because I, it, g it gave me something to do. And, uh, and it, it was fun. I mean, it, ha it has its bad days and months. But I, I save my money. Every time I go to the grocery store, I save. Every, and I go every week for just to get out of get out of this place. But uh, I, I save sixty bucks every week. So sixty bucks, sixty bucks, sixty bucks, and it slowly adds up. I mean, I got I have other money, but this is like my car money. So that's it. Uh, like I said, I'm going to stick this other video in here somewhere of me going to this place in Oregon. It's, it only lasts about a minute, <clears throat> but it's interesting. <clears throat> so, and if it's not clear, I'll just tell you, this is how it goes. I, I get down there, man, it's windy. It's like, the guy lives up on this hill. I mean, he lives in like a mansion and he's a mechanic and he's got his own shop. I don't show that because I took a tour of his mechanic shop later. We go inside, I go up these stairs into this huge, huge uh, shop. I mean, th this is not where he works on his cars. This is the shop behind that. I mean, it's, it's freaking huge. But we go upstairs and he's got all these parts. And I just scan real quick because I have one thing on my mind, get these rims and get out of here. But, you know, there's people like this around that have these parts. I mean, he also said... I just want to stop. He goes, I want to stop doing this. I don't want to, 
he doesn't do this full time. I guess he had a hobby once of, uh, yeah, he showed me pictures of Trans Ams that he had built. But yeah, he's got all these parts upstairs. Some of them are brand new. And I think he said something in the video, and I didn't listen. Something about here, I got some of these, and he had some. He had a bunch of uh, gauge packages. You know, like if you pull your gauges out, it come they come all out in one big. I don't know what you call it. The gauge piece that holds the main gauges. But I said, you know, and and I had, and I was going to order one, but I said, have you tested them? He says no, so I didn't get that. Took the time about temperature gauge. Anyway, that's where I'm at. But I'm just going to show you this <clears throat> to end this. So I'm on YouTube, <clears throat> and I don't quite understand, but I saw it. My time because of the spring. My tires, the bottoms are pushed out. You, they want to be pushed in, so they're always. I mean, from what I understand, I'm not an expert at this. So that they're out. They were out two degrees, which doesn't sound like anything, but it was. And you, I would think that the yeah, longer springs are going to push this out. You can see it. It's going to push that wheel out. To get this shorter, I need looser springs like they had in stock to get it back in. I mean, I never thought about the geometry of this. But, and just talking about this a little bit more, if you go back and look at my car, the, the front end is way, is, is, is higher, like an inch or so. I mean, it, it doesn't take that much to just throw off that geometry that they have figured out. So that's it. <laughs> okay, I'm in Oregon. I'll explain it later, but I had to come here to get a rim from my car. I drove about an hour and a half to get here. So we're gonna in a second I'll uh, show you the inside. I've never been here before. This is the guy that's selling the parts. Anyway, here's his uh his parts. I don't know. Where did you get all these parts? Just gathered them up over the years. And you and you knew uh, Darren? I knew Darren you know, a long time ago. So this isn't a huge place, but he's got parts and I need them. So this is what you got to do if you're building a car. I think he's got eight tracks. Lots of eight tracks. I have uh, OEM weather stripping too which are not available anymore. If you want actual OEM weather stripping, I've got... Uh, oh, you got gauges, huh? I've got the gauges. Are they good? Uh, I've never hmm. tested them. Anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera off. This is what it looks like. And there's what I came for. The rim. Yep. And he's got all kinds of... Fiberglass scoops. Lots of scoops. About uh, 75 scoops. And uh, and what I what would I this is what I would expect. Stuff. Okay, that's it.